Welcome to the webinar. I'm so excited to have you here. If you're watching the replay, welcome to the replay as well. Um, I always say, and you know, you, you know me, if you know me at all, um, definitely have a coach. I always have a coach or a mentor. And what he has me doing is watching these type of webinars. And when we jump on Zoom, his calls four times, because what happens is the first time you watch it, you'll get about 40% of it. And the second time, maybe another 15, 20, third time, another 15, 20. So it's going to be a lot of information that I'm throwing at you today. Uh, so definitely, I would encourage you, uh, grab a pen and paper, take some notes, uh, but more importantly, go back and watch it a few different times. I'll send you the recording and it will also be posted to my YouTube channel uh, so you can watch it there as well. So I'm just really really excited for today and just jumping jumping into 2024 and, and getting after it. So thank you for joining me. Let me go ahead and share my screen here and get going right away. All right. Enter full screen. Can you see my screen? Yes. The bullseye. All right. So let's get going with the bullseye, your goals in 2024. I uh, always like to start off with what I started off with when I found all this information, which um, will be gratitude. So we'll start with the gratitude and appreciation. I'm also going to touch on, you know, philosophy standard, five non-negotiables, more about setting goals. I would love for this to be interactive. I talk a lot and I talk fast sometimes because I want to get it all in. So feel free to stop me. I will um, also pause as well for questions. I want this to really be impactful for the ones that have shown up and are here. So uh, feel free to dive in and ask questions if you have any, for sure. So starting with gratitude, you know, it all starts with gratitude. And I didn't find this information or coaching or understand this until I was about 40 years old. So seven years ago or so, I hit my personal rock bottom where I knew something had to change. Like my life was probably three to five days away from completely crumbling. And I'm talking losing my family, losing my home, losing my husband, all due to alcohol. And I had to make some decisions and I had to make some choices. And I literally, the, the, the picture you have of someone on their hands and knees, just begging and not knowing where to go or what to do. Um, I was able to find, you know, my first step and then take the first next step. And it was just kind of one of those step after step after step. And um, what had happened is eventually about three months into the whole process of, you know, um, going from where I was to where I wanted to be, I hired my first coach, which was Bob Proctor. And you might know him or recognize him from The Secret. They always said he's the old dude in The Secret. So he had um, studied the material that I'm going to share with you today for over 61 years. And the first thing that he even ever talked to me about or, you know, introduced to me was gratitude, because what he said is he said, you can't get to where you want to go if you are not grateful where you're at. And as you can imagine, at that point in my life, I didn't feel like I had much to be grateful for. And yet it was through his coaching and his mentorship that I did find plenty to be grateful for. And when I switched my energy from, you know, victim, lack, limitation, just being at the rock bottom of the rock bottom to finding gratitude and looking at it all from a different perspective, completely shifting it, everything changed. And I was like, whoa. That was, it was just like breathtaking, mind blowing that I, even within a year amount of time, as he said, I needed a telescope to look back to see who I once was. And I'm, uh, I'm very grateful and happy to report that next month will be seven years for me of sobriety. Yeah. It's 
<laughs> yes, yes, it's completely in my past, not even on my radar anymore, because this is the thing. We can become someone different. We don't have to be attached. And I know, April, we were talking about this before the call. We don't have to be attached to who we once were or the past experiences we've had. And so many times, I mean, if you think about how you woke up today, did you start thinking about how amazing of a day it was going to be? Or like most people, you start thinking about what went wrong yesterday, or you get into a different energy. Uh, it's all about making the choice and the decision and choosing how you want to wake up and choosing, you know, going right into gratitude. So, you know, if you're not in the home you want, be grateful for where you are. Maybe you're not driving the car. Maybe it's the job, you know, a, a relationship sounds like it's great for, for you, uh, April, as you're going to be getting married as well. Uh, but in that, feel into that and feel into the gratitude of where you're at right now. And it's in doing that, that you will open, you'll get away from lack and limitation, you'll open the space to invite more in. Because if you can't be grateful for where you're at, you will, will just be coming from that lower energy, and you're not going to invite anything in of what you desire. So I always start with gratitude. Gratitude is so important. Again, it's an expression, and it's a feeling. It's knowing what it is that you want and desire and feeling it as if it's already here and done. So coming from your goal, not to your goal, which we'll definitely get into more. Um, the next thing was appreciation. A lot of people think they're the same thing. And I like to separate gratitude and appreciation. And I'll give a story with this as well. So after the whole gratitude thing, and I got you know, my hands around that. And I do gratitude exercises every morning. I think it's a great way to start off your day and get you in the right energy and mindset. He said, now I want you to take the most difficult relationship or situation in your life. And at the time, again, this is uh, quite a few years ago, and um, want you to find some appreciation around it. And at that time, I was in a co-parenting relationship uh, with my husband's ex who it was just from the get-go. I came into my bonus son's life when he was 10 months old and we're talking decade or more of horrendous low victim energy. How could she do this? You know, I can't believe this. Da, da, da. And just, just. Just, I can't even explain to you the place that I was coming from until I found this information. And Bob said, he's like, I want you to take that relationship in that situation and find 25 things that you're grateful for about it. And I actually laughed out loud. I was like, oh my God, yeah, that's not going to happen. I mean, I was solidified in the fact that it would never be anything more than this just I could never be appreciative for her for everything she's done to my husband and my family and you know she kept him from it was just like a just victim 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 as I said so he said no he's like this this is it you need to do this and so I was like all right you know I <laughs> I paid a lot of money for him to coach me when I had none so I'm like I said I would do whatever he told me to do so I did and I sat down and I'm like, all right, so first things first, what, what am I appreciative of for her? And I'm like, well, this is really weird. But at a doctor's appointment, I remember my bonus son was laying there. Um, I think he was getting ready to go into surgery for, for something. And she like swiped his hair away from his face. And I was watching that, not talking. Of course, we didn't talk. We pretended each other didn't exist. Um, and I looked, I was like, God, I like, she has nice hands. And I'm like, oh. I couldn't even like that. I liked her hands. I mean, that's how bad this was. And so I wrote down hands. All right. She has nice hands, whatever. And then it almost instantly just opened up a different space for me to be in. And I'm like, all right, well, I've heard some pretty horrific stories out there um, where, you know, the other side of the equation isn't able to take care or, you know, afford things or this and that. And she has a great job. She has amazing health insurance for him, you know, so I just started writing these things down and I was somehow able to get to 25 
So I'm telling you, if you put your mind to it, there is a different perception to everything. There's a law of polarity. There's an opposite, good, bad, up, down, in, out to everything. So, and why I share this story with you is because what once I would have paid you a million, 10 million, I would have told you to tell me the number if I ever thought this relationship would be okay. And it was through doing this and doing this exercise that I actually, in another coaching program, had to make a gratitude call. And through all of my work with this, I called her. And I wow. didn't answer. I was like shaking. <laughs> but I called <laughs> her. And I left a message. And she called me back. And I was just like, you know, I know things have been how they have been, but I want you to let you know that I am grateful that I know he's always taken care of. And I never have to worry about the kid couldn't have more love and people fighting over giving him attention. I mean, that's a, that's a pretty beautiful place to be. And it's not always that way. So I just say, I, I appreciate you for, for that. And uh, I just want to let you know that. And then she back to me said, you know, I always tell him how lucky he is to have you and his stepdad, because not many, you know, not everyone has a situation we have um, in that area where we just care so much. And, you know, so it was a nice little shift, instant shift. Like I remember he's big into baseball and we had rain delays often. And I was always the odd woman out, you know, because there was their community, their school, all their friends. And then I'm the stepmom that shows up from a different you know, school district, different community, don't hang out. And so I was always, you know, off in the distance or sitting at my own tail or whatever, you know, it was just always uncomfortable because I made it that way. And she, um, after that, I remember walking into this restaurant bar and <laughs> she looked over and she's like, Angie, come here. And I literally like looked behind me. I was like, me? <laughs> like I got invited to the table, you know, and then I heard her talk like a person and all of a sudden, all of this uh, just slowly melted away. And we were people and we were people who it made me realize that, you know, everyone's fighting their own battle and mm -hmm. we are all doing the very best we can at this very moment with the tools, the resources, what we know and our perception of what we think and know to be true or real. And that's it. And so it was through that, that we started to, you know, shift the energy and shift the relationship. And I sold her house and helped her buy new construction. What? <laughs> what? <laughs> so <laughs> I'm here to tell you from where I was, from the broken soul and person I was to where I, I, you know, with my rock bottom and with this relationship, I mean, if you have something like this, it can be different. It just takes a different perception and a different awareness, which is all of what I coach to and all of what Bob taught me. And now I am going to spend the rest of my life teaching whoever will listen to me about it because it's so, so powerful. Uh, so I just wanted to give that little bit of a, you know, introduction and, and understanding of a lot of where this all starts for anyone on this journey. Right. Yes. Getting right into goals. So 2024 is here. So think about this. Do you have a goal? And if you have a goal, is it written down? And, you know, a lot of people may have a goal or they've been thinking about it, but it's just not solidified or written down. So I would encourage you um, to write it down. You know, some entrepreneurs, business owners, uh, people in different companies, wherever you're at, will have a specific goal and they'll write it all down, maybe create a whole business plan about it and not look at it again. You know, there's still power in writing it down, uh, but I want you to be thinking about today, is your goal worthy of you? Meaning, does it inspire you? The goals that I have my elite coaching clients set, I want them to not only inspire and excite them, but 
almost terrified a little bit, like how ever would that happen? Because I want it to be worthy enough of you that you wake up every day excited about it. You wake up every day recommitting to it. Because if you have a so so goal, it's just, it's not going to do it for you. Or you're not going to commit to, you know, doing what you need to do and becoming who you need to become to get it. And this is a big one. Because I didn't set my own goals for a year. I did what I thought, you know, in real estate, my team leader thought I should do or what numbers this or, you know, I didn't even know how to set. So someone would tell me, well, what about this? Okay. Do you think I ever made my goal? No, <laughs> because it wasn't my goal. So think about that. Is your goal even your goal? Because if it's not, the likelihood of you achieving it and making it is going to be a lot less. So I encourage you to think about that for sure. Is it your goal or is it someone else's? And in setting goals, the average goal, good goal and exceptional goal. So an average goal is a goal that you've achieved before. So we'll take real estate because you, you're, you both, you're, you were a realtor and you are a realtor. So, um, average goal, you've achieved it before. I'm going to sell 10 houses. I sold 10 houses last year. That's not really a good goal because you know how to do it. Um, a good goal would be 12. So I'm going to go from 10 to 12. You know, that's a good goal. I mean, you'll know probably how to get it because um, you did 10. It's only two more. It's not going to really stretch you. And I want you to play in the exceptional goal area. And that is you have no idea how it's going to happen. The only prerequisite is that you want it. You desire it. You will go after it. So that would be going maybe from 10 to 30. You've never done that before. You have no idea how it's going to happen. You just know it's going to happen and you want it to happen. How do you get where you're going if you don't know where you are? So this is where we take a moment to really look at our current circumstances and understand where we're at, because you need to know where you are in order to get to where you want to go. Uh, and I encourage you, know your results, know where you're at, know the number of transactions you're doing, know the number in your bank account. However, I want you to detach from your current results if they're not what you desire if they're not putting you in the right vibration and sending you on to the right frequency, if it's making you feel lack, limitation, you know, frustrated or upset or just ugh, because it's not what you desired, you know, maybe your 2023 goal, you missed it. Um, so let that go right away. And what I want you to do is I want you to set that exceptional goal. You know, a lot of people call it a stretch goal. You can have your goal that you know, your good goal that you know you're going to make uh, if that's where your comfort is. But I encourage you to get comfortable being uncomfortable and setting that exceptional goal. And why we want to do that is we want to start coming from the goal. You see, so many people work to up to their goal. Well, I'm going to do this and I'm going to do that. And then I'm going to do this and then I'm going to do that. And I'm going to work up to my goal of 30. So what I want you to start doing right away is coming from your goal, because I can tell you one thing and promise you this all day long, every day. If you set an exceptional goal or a stretch goal, you will not get there from who you are and where you are today. And I wish someone would have told me that when I was setting these goals that I had no idea how you were going to get there, how I was going to get there. Because I, I did some things differently. I definitely got a little uncomfortable, but I didn't get uncomfortable enough or I didn't change enough or I didn't stretch myself enough to ever have gotten those big goals. So think about who you need to become and start coming from that person coming from that feeling, what does an agent who does 30 deals a day, what does their morning routine look like? You know, insert your name. What does Angie look like when she's, you know, doing that? What is she reading? 
What conversations is she around? What trainings is she doing? You know, what is she feeding her body? How is she taking care of herself? You know, spiritually, how am I tapping into, you know, my faith in really feeling it? So it's, it's important to think about that and know that you won't get to where you want to go from who you are today. And that's just the reality of it. So it's about taking, you know, the first step because you're not going to know how it's going to happen. It's detaching from your current circumstances, your current reality, your current bank account, your current results, and it's going and coming from the goal already done. And by raising your vibration to that new frequency over and over and over again, as many times as you can throughout the day, I have alarms set on my phone so I can check my vibration and frequency uh, going there that the more often and the more you connect to and come from your goal versus to your goal, that is where the magic happens or the universe responds or God responds and the people the opportunities, the situations, the money, the clients, they will be put in your path if you do this. And if you get out of the low vibration and the low energy and come from the goal already achieved, it's amazing. And I am telling you, I didn't believe this. I will be straightforward. I did not believe this in the beginning. Absolutely not. But I was at such a low spot, which is part of my journey where I needed to be to even receive this information. Because before that, I thought I knew it all. I had it all figured out. <laughs> you know, it was just like, I don't need whatever, 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 you know. And it, it took me to get down to that level to actually let this in and let God in and let the universe in and let Bob, you know, in and start taking these steps that I was just like, well, I have nowhere else to go. So I'll do it. In that first year, when I got my goal in 2017, I was like, this shit works. I was like, oh my <laughs> God, of course it does, right? And then I did it again. And I was like, I set these goals. I had no idea how I was going to get it. And I got it. And again, and I'm like, whoa. And of course, you know, because you come from it, you're feeling it, you know it, it's going to happen. It's a law of the universe. You know, it's, we don't create the laws of the universe. Um, you can play with them or you can just ignore them. But I'll tell you one thing, they're there and they're working all the time, just like your subconscious. It's there and it's always eavesdropping on your thoughts and what you're thinking all the time. I say, take gravity. You're a good person or a bad person. You fall or jump off a building, the same thing's going to happen. That's just it. So I learned about all these different ways that you can tap into what's already inside of you and already available to you and available to anyone that will decide on faith versus fear, because we have both. You choose both every day, all day long. You choose fear or faith. The thing is, is that the faith choice takes you go, taking a leap of faith and understanding that your five senses, hear, see, smell, taste, touch will be the last to experience your goal. But we have it all backwards. We look at our bank account, we look at our current results and we feel a certain way. So we feel this certain way. It's not what we want. So we're in this energy, in this vibration. So we give that out and we're giving that out and that's what we're getting back. And it's like this circle you just spin in over and over and over again, because most people will choose the fear. And in choosing the fear, I mean, they're just going to stay where they're at because they'd rather choose to stay where they're at. And the, like, I guess, familiarity of it, then take a leap of faith and go for something big or go for that excellent goal. So think about that. Think about what you're doing and holding yourself back from. Because it's all, we're all 100% energy. We're all connected. Uh, so definitely, first things first, if you're looking at your results and they're not what you want, you back it up. Your results are because of actions you took or didn't take. And you take action or don't take action based upon how you're feeling. 
and you feel the way you feel based upon what you're thinking and what you're letting into your environment, what your you know conversations you're having, the people you're around. They talk about the five people that you surround yourself with. They're you know have the biggest impact. You know, are you around the same people? You get together and just complain over and over. I was there for years, complain over and over and over again, or tell the same stories, or come from the same place, or are you in different rooms? And we are so blessed right now in, so, in such a time where if you don't have the money to get into these top one to three percent mastermind rooms and be around these people that are doing exactly what you intend to do, there's YouTube, there's podcasts, there's Audible, there's books. Everyone that is any has done anything of significance has more than likely a version of what they've done out there that you can tap into right away and get inspiration from. Because I can tell you one thing as well, for sure. If any one person has done what you intend to do or has achieved your exceptional goal or a version of it, there's absolutely no reason why you can't. The only reason you can't is you. You are your only problem and you are your only solution. And it starts with your thoughts. It starts with your perception. It starts with coming from your higher faculties versus your five senses. And I, I see right now I want to go off over here, but I'm going to stay. I promise you I'll stay on track and stay with my slides. There's just so much I could share with you. Um, but that's just something that came through and I want to talk about right away. So as you're going into this year and as you're going through you know, thinking about how you want to show up, what goals you want to set. Think about standard. What is your standard? See, a standard is a rule or principle that is used as a base, basis for judgment. So, you know, some ideas to consider when you're establishing your standard is focus on being the best version of yourself. You know, how can you develop a generous attitude or leave everyone with the impression of increase? Uh, that you come in contact with. So they're better off once they've left you than they were when you first came into their, you know, area. Uh, bless five people every day. You know, think about your standard of how you're going to show up for your business. You know, I, at the very, very minimum, my standard is X. And when the old programming comes back in, or, you know, the fear part of it, versus the faith part of it, where it just wants to keep you comfortable and it doesn't want you to grow. It's trying to keep you safe. Um, this is where 90% of people play and let that pull them back down. And that's why we have one to 3% of the population making most of the money because they play in that other arena that I want to explain and get you in tune with today. So think about your standards and what happens so often and what, what I've found to be so true and I focus on so much with my clients is the standard. See, you set your standard and you'll hold it, but then the old program will come in or the person that you get around that, you know, expects you to show up in a certain way because this is how it's been for 10 years, 20 years, 30 years, and all of a sudden you're here and it makes them very uncomfortable because now you're holding a mirror up or they're just not quite sure, you know, of, of what's happening. I know that happened to me at the beginning of my sobriety. I had people that I'd known for decades that didn't know what to do with me now because I made them uncomfortable. So it's holding your standard, whether it be sobriety, whether it be in your business as a mom, as an entrepreneur, as a spouse, as whatever it is, your role, your playing. Um, I encourage you to watch the self-talk and to watch when that old programming pulls back and say, I see you, I don't need that anymore. Because what happens is so many people start, stop, or they drop down because you want to make this person comfortable. Or you want to let them know that you feel them and, and you understand them. And we'll, so we'll just drop down and then we'll have to come back up. And that's going to, you know, you're not going to get the results you desire that way. So when you're setting the standard, focus on holding it, knowing you will falter, you will mess up, just pull it right back up every time. And it's in the awareness around that, that every time you do falter or it does fall, that you pull it right back up and say, no, 
this is my new standard and you hold it and you stick to it. And the more you do that, the more the universe will reward you. And the more you will show up at as that different level in that different energy, raising your vibration to that different frequency. And again, things, the circumstances, the opportunities, they will be shown and put in your path. Uh, but it starts with the standard. And standard and philosophy, they're so in tune with each other. This is the creed by which you live. So it's um, it's about who you want to be and how you want to act and, and think. So if you have the philosophy that it's hard, money doesn't come to me easy, money doesn't grow on trees, I couldn't do that. That's not for me. You know, think about all the philosophies and all the things that you have or you say to yourself, that isn't even true. It's just learned behavior. And I, I, I encourage you through the standard in philosophy because they're inter interdependent, create a philosophy that will be influenced by your new standard that will support your big goals and being generous and showing up at a different level. You know, everything I touch turns to gold. You know, I'm so happy and grateful now that and come from that different energy. Switch your philosophy on how you look at things. Flip it on its head. Use the law of clarity that I mentioned earlier. It's so, so very important because the philosophy of what you truly think is will become. So if you're, again, not having or getting the results you truly desire, what are you thinking? What is your philosophy? You know, my standard is I, I hold my standard. I don't drop it. I'm a world-class coach. I am here to serve at the highest level and impact millions of people, you know, and whatever yours is. And you just say that and you stick to that and you feel from that. So philosophy and standard are two of the things that I want you to look at as you're looking at creating your goals and who you need to become in order to get that goal. So looking at your goal, looking at your day, looking at, did I live my standard and my philosophy today? So I encourage you to bookend your day. In the morning, I write 10 things that I'm grateful for and start off in that energy. And I do a few different other things, but at the end of the day, it's bookending your day. So at the end of the day, what are your wins? Where did you show up? Where did you push your faith and let go of fear and hold your standard or have a different philosophy or become the person in the version of you that you needed to become and start celebrating your wins. And if there were some things that didn't go well or didn't go as you planned or that you wish would have been different, write those down and then focus tomorrow on not letting that happen again. And it's through doing this day after day after day that the change will come and that you will shift out of where you once were to where you want to go. It's through the repetition of doing this over and over and over again that you continually impress upon your subconscious what it is that you truly desire. And by doing that over and over and over again, you will move out what no longer serves you and replace it with what does. Because 95% of what you do every day is habitual behaviors. About 5% of it's strategy. And our habitual behaviors are locked up in our subconscious. Many of them were created by the time we were seven years old. And again, that's a whole other webinar. I still study the conscious and the subconscious every day. Uh, it, it's something that I will and Bob did until the day he left this earth. So it's really about understanding yourself better and understanding why we do what we do. And one of the biggest things that I learned is nothing changes if nothing changes. You do have to go in and do the work and shift out what no longer serves you, especially if you're getting the same result over and over and over again, are you continually set these goals and you're not making them? There's a reason. And there's a process to correct that and get your perception, your will, imagination, intuition, intuition, memory, and reason in check and start living from your higher faculties versus your five senses. 
your five senses are, as Albert Einstein said, the the servant and your higher faculties are the gift. And we've created a society that honors the servant and has forgotten the gift. I had no idea what my higher faculties were before I met Bob. And he explained it to me. And it's now through strengthening these and living from these and not through my five senses that everything can change. And it's beautiful. Definitely. So thinking about that, and I've been leaning into this a lot more. So I want to, I think I talked about this on my podcast last week, but I want to bring it up again. We so much talk about when we're setting goals and who do you need to become? You know, I talk about coming from your goal, making decisions from your goal, showing up as the person that's already achieved your goal, feeling it as if it's already here and done. Um, but even taking the flip side of that coin, who do you need to not be? Who do you need to unbecome? unbecome? What habits do you need to stop doing? What do you need to, you know, do you hit the snooze every morning? Or do you look at that, you know, you shouldn't be eating that. Your system won't respond very well to it, but you do anyways. I know I'm very guilty of that. And then I feel the aches and the pain and the ugh after. But I just, I couldn't say no. Well, yeah, I could. <laughs> I could have said no but I chose not to. So it's in those little wins and truly deciding who you need to unbecome and who you need to not show up as because you will not get to your goal if it's worthy enough of you from where you are today and who you are today. So not only who you will become, but who do you need to not be today in order to get there? It's a very powerful way. And I love having both sides of the coin because each side will resonate with different people depending on where you're at in your journey. So just think about that and choose one thing. You don't have to go from zero to 100. You're going to set yourself up for probably failure. Right? So one thing, decide what it'll be. And I love the non-negotiables. So thinking about the non-negotiables, this is what one of my coaches had talked about and he said it so well. Um, it was Bob's um, you know, right-hand man. Uh, Bob passed away so I couldn't have him anymore. So I hired the very next best thing to him. And this is something that Bob taught us for years. And now he put it in five non-negotiables or he calls it the power of five. So this is what I want you to think about as you're going through 2024 and as you're setting your goal and as the programming's fighting you on, you know, switching from where you are today to where you want to be. Every day you have to make the decision. You have to make the decision. You have to recommit to your goal every day, every day. And that is why I want it to inspire you. I want it to excite you and terrify you and get you motivated. And if it can wake you up in the middle of the night or want you jumping out of bed, I mean, that's the goals that you want to go after. So think about that. What can you decide and what will you make the decision every day to recommit to? It's got to be worthy of you. If it's not worthy of you and if you're not inspired and motivated, you won't decide every day to go after it. So it's in the making that decision every day. What disciplines do you need to put in place? And pick one or two, maybe three. Don't go from zero to seven or 10 or 15 or 100. You know, start off and just do one thing differently. Get one discipline. Get that plate spinning in the air before you pick up another one. And just get these wins. Get these wins under your belt. What's a discipline that you can start today, right now? that will get you on the path to where you wanna go. Set that standard and don't drop it. Quit dropping your standard. Quit starting, stopping, starting, stopping. Say no, that is your old programming. That is who you once were. That's just gonna to continue to pull, pull you down, pull at you, take your standard and wanting to push against it. And it's the awareness, it's the understanding of when it's happening, why it's happening, and most importantly, that you can name it, call it, think it, and let it go. I, I, I understand what that's there here for. I don't need it anymore. This is where I'm going, and I'm holding it no matter what. 
because I've made the decisions and I'm creating the disciplines to hold my standard. And self-image, by far self-image, definitely something that you'll want to work on every single day. And I talk about it, 1% better every day. 1% better every day. And you will need a telescope to look back to see who you once were. I know it was the same for me. It absolutely can be. I am a product of the product. I know this works. And if you commit to 1% better every day, you are the worst version of yourself right now in this moment. It's only going to get better. And can you imagine that? Can you imagine where you'll be if you truly commit to self-image? And that can be keeping your promise to yourself, holding your standard. It could be reading five pages, 10 pages, 10 minutes a day of something. I know we talked about Joe Dispenza early, you know, diving into something different, something new. Um, if you binge watch TV, you know, don't cut it out completely. Start with 20 minutes, maybe one less episode. You switch out for a podcast that will get you to grow, whether it's on mindset or wealth or the business you want to go into or start or something that you need for a discipline to get that going. You know, if it's the five people, you don't have to switch out all five people at once. Start with one. And I know for me, it was some family members and some really close friends. And what Bob told me is he's like, don't go as often and don't stay as long. You don't have to cut them out completely, but the awareness and the standard. This Can you see how this is all intertwined and part of each other? It's so amazing. Yeah. yeah. And attitude. Attitude is a compilation of your thoughts, your feelings, and your actions is your attitude. So think about your attitude. Think about where you can, you know, think differently or act differently, how you can show up differently. You know, attitude is so very important because I will tell you this. There are two things that no one can take away from you and no one can control. And that's your thoughts and your attitude. You know, you go to like Victor Franco, who was in the concentration camp, they couldn't make him think a different way. And he ended up through his visualization and using his imagination escaping because he tapped into this. It's phenomenal what you can do. And that's why when it says educate yourself, no one can take away your education and your thoughts and what you know. So think about that. Your thoughts, what you know, how you use your thoughts and your attitude. And a smile is free. You can change someone's day so very quickly by holding a door open for, for them giving them a compliment, you know, the impression of increase, seeing someone struggling, or that person comes into your mind, call them or shoot them a message or a text. It's there for a reason. So I would say if, you know, intuitively, if your intuition, if you're having these hits, start following them, even if they're little, that's what I did. And it was by following them and, you know, getting those little wins that you'll build up to bigger ones. You just got to start. And again, live from your goal, not to your goal. When you don't know what to do or you're stuck, ask yourself, what would the Angie do that was here? How do I show up? What is my standard? What disciplines do I have? What decisions do I make? What self-image? How do I show up? And what rooms am I in? Who am I surrounding myself with? And the beautiful thing is if you can't be in those rooms or do that right now, you can, you go there in your imagination. It's all about the feeling of it. You have to feel it. And one more thing I'll say on goals, don't cap them. It's this or better, this or more. Don't cap them. Minimum. Your exceptional goal is the minimum. Leave it open. Leave it open for more to come in. It's important. And I uh, didn't know that as well early on. So I think it's definitely something to talk about. Think about your daily routine and how it does matter. How do you start your day? And I know I talked about ending your day. One thing, don't have to flip everything on its head, but start in a routine of what that looks like. You know, and some people are just like, I just get up and work and I'm extremely successful. Well, if that works for you, then continue to do that. But 
97 out of 100 people that I know it does not work for what they're doing isn't working. So what's one thing that you can do differently? Maybe you get up and leave yourself more space to give gratitude or to write 10 things down that you're grateful for, or you give yourself time to listen to music or listen to, you know, um, the message, the message of, of what you spiritually need to hear meditation. There's so many things you can do. And so often, so many people are waking up, hitting the snooze, and then all of a sudden they're in a panic. And think about how you start your day. If you're starting in a panic, running out the door, quit doing that to yourself. And I know I'm just not a morning person. No, I'm just not this. I Quit speaking that over you and quit letting other people speak over you these things. You don't have to be anything that you don't want to be. You can make a different decision. You can become a morning person or you can do this or you can do that. It's just, we let these things, you know, it, it's going back to people from our past and they remember you 10 years ago, 15 years ago, and you are so far away from that person, but they'll speak over you and onto you what they know you to be. And they want you to come back down because most often people haven't changed. So you changing and you feeling this and moving on and upward and coming from this amazing goal makes many people uncomfortable. And so they'll pull you and they'll want and they'll speak over you and they'll say oh you're you're always just that way or this or that or this or that and you're not and you don't have to accept that standard hold it amazing so big dreams set goals take action i know we've talked a lot about you know that today and just giving you the very basics of what this looks like. And I know I've get thrown a lot at you and there's so much more I could, uh, but this is just so important to, it's a really strong foundation and way to look at things for sure. And I just want to encourage you, how can you wake up like this every day? You know, what I tell my kids and I talk to them about their futures and what they're doing and I, you know, the biggest thing is, and what I wish someone would have told me early on is what do you love to do? Like, what do you show up and do that doesn't feel like work? You're so in tune. You found my purpose found me. I don't think you find your purpose. I think it finds you at 40, but it's found me. So now I get to do this. So how can you figure out and find what it is you like to do? What inspires you? What doesn't feel like work, like, ah, uh, I'm just going to hit my snooze. It does inspire me. I don't want to do it. And how do you figure out how to do that every day and maybe make a living from that or help others and, and tap into that place of you? So think about that. If you're not, if you're not inspired by what you're doing, what would inspire you? I mean, there's so many people that are so successful, very, very different ways. There's so many different ways to do this. Again, another webinar, I won't get into all the, the stuff I could on that, but just, just I want to plant that seed for sure. And then a recap, you know, practice gratitude and appreciation. It's what started me on this journey. And it's so, so very important. And I will go to my grave saving gratitude. It all starts with gratitude. If you cannot be grateful in this moment, you're more than likely not going to get anything more than you already have. So find what it is you're grateful for. Appreciation. Take that hard relationship. I, you know, find me on it. Reach out to me. I'd love to help you through that because I never, ever, ever would have thought where I'm at now is so different. And I'm telling you, it is such a different energy for over a decade. I was drinking poison, expecting the other person to suffer. And I was the only one suffering. It was like mm -hmm. picking up a hot coal and throwing it at them. I'm the one that's burnt and I missed hitting them. So think about that because when you're, when you're in that victim mode and you're in that, you know, frustration and, and hurt and, and hatred, it, it really, really is just, can you imagine how dark it is? And it can be light. So just lean into that if you need to. And if you need help on that, let me know, because it will shift everything. The energy and the space and the beauty that is opened up when you switch from that, and that perception and that reality, 
Wow. It's a gift. And it's a gift I want to help give you if you need it. Is your goal worthy of you? Do you have a goal yet? Is it written down? Think about that. And know that you will not get to your goal from who and where you are today. And if you can, it's not the right goal. I would really, really want to um, challenge you on that because you should, you need to get comfortable being uncomfortable and growing. That is what we are here for. We are spiritual beings having a human experience. And so many people have it backwards. They think we're human beings having a spiritual experience. No, we are spiritual beings having a human experience. Spiritually, we are made for expansion. You should always be grateful, never satisfied, never satisfied, always grateful, but you're meant for expansion because if you're not expanding, you're contracting and dying. So expand, what are you expanding to? So think about that. And who do you need to, in that expansion process, who do you need to become or leave behind? The old version of you. Let it go. I work with on this every day because I have really big goals and they terrify me. And I have <laughs> I've become a much different person already. And I'm only scratching the surface. And that's terrifying. But I know my purpose and I know what I'm here for. And I know that this is much greater than me. And again. Whole other different, <laughs> whole other different webinar. Um, Non-negotiables. What will you start today? What decision are you going to make that you'll make over and over and every day? What disciplines will you put in place? What things on your daily routine can you start doing? One thing to be one percent better. Get your self-image one percent better every day. Commit to being the worst version of yourself in this very moment and every moment here on out because you're only going to get one percent better every day and become more aware, have a different perception, use your intuition. It's just an amazing spot to be. And bookend your days. Start your days off right. However, that is for you. If you need more, you know, tips or tricks or, or ways to do that, I have a list that may you something would resonate with you. And at the end of the day, celebrate your wins. We never stop and celebrate our wins. Where did you do what you said you were going to do? You showed up from your goal. You unbecame that person, celebrate it. And the places where you faltered, you did not fail. You only fail if you don't start or you stop. That's failure. Everything else is feedback. So take that feedback and choose differently the next day. It will build and build and build on each other. And it's phenomenal. Absolutely. So I want to take any questions you might have. I know we just have a few minutes left, but I'd love ahas or anything you ladies want to dive into. I would, I've heard you say this uh, a number of times, but you know, the only failure is not starting or stopping yeah. and the rest is feedback. And I think that holds me sometimes, you know, the fear of failure, it holds me back from thinking I deserve more, need more, want more. Um, it stops me in my tracks sometimes. So yeah. failure <laughs> right, is, is eminent if I don't just kick it into gear and get over that fear yeah. and um, realize that either I can do it or should do it or deserve it yeah. ultimately. Absolutely. Yeah. I love that that resonated with you because it's so true. And if you're playing big enough, you should fail every day. You should yeah. like not get to where you thought you were going to go or take a step backwards. And I'll tell you the number one thing that the, the my clients I work with across the board is we care too much what other people think about, yeah. think about us. And we're so worried about this or that, or what if I say the wrong thing? Or what if I look like a fool or what if the, the and the truth is, is most people aren't even thinking about you. <laughs> we just and if you think about it that way or you think about will it matter tomorrow will it matter in an hour will it matter tomorrow a week a month a year you know and just go for it because we're here as much as much as we know right now this is our one shot and you can't mm -hmm. buy time you only have what you have today so the thing is is the time you have 
we all get the same amount. We all get 24 hours in a day. It's the activities and what you do with your time. And that's why some people are at the top and other people's are just part of part of the norm because they don't use their time the way they could to get to where they want to be and they care too much what other people think. I know it's something that I um, continue to work on too. It stops me a lot and then I feel it and then I, I decide fear or faith. Mm -hmm. this is my decision just like it's yours I love that thanks for sharing <laughs> all right well look at look me up if you have any questions or if I can help with anything and truly if it's not me that's fine but I encourage you find a coach or a mentor it makes all the difference and it can help you quantum leap from where you are to where you want to be very quickly it could take what would take you years and collapse it in time because it's so, so, so very important. I know I have my blinders on to this day. I will always have a coach or mentor because the lead of the lead do, the top of the top do, they have advisory boards. They have multiple, multiple people helping them. So if I can be of assistance, let me know. Other than that, have a blessed rest of your day. Fantastic. Go after it. Set your standard, hold your standard and kill it. <laughs> All right. Thank ladies. you. Thanks, Absolutely.